Hello world, it's Siraj. Hi guys, how's it going? Good to see you. Hi everybody. Uh, wow, so just start off with the request, a video request. Stock recommender system. Uh, that's gonna happen in the future. I actually I have a video on that. Uh, check out predicting stock prices. Anyway, uh, I'll probably do another one in the future. Hi guys, hello world. Oh my God, everybody is coming in. I'm so happy to see all of you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list some names really quick. Uh, George, Pericles, Ayad, Sun, Nico, Sanjay, Mudit, Lakshya, Anjana, Bhavya, Arthur. Hello, everybody. Today, we are, thank you. I got it from OpenAI. I'm glad you like my t-shirt. I'm so proud to wear this t-shirt, even though I don't work for them. I love this t-shirt. OK, so today, <laughs> everybody, uh, we are going to, we are going to, build uh, tic-tac-toe, and we're gonna build a neural network that gets better and better at tic-tac-toe over time, okay? That's what we're gonna do, uh, and uh, the first thing I wanna do before we start building this neural net to defeat tic-tac-toe is I want to uh, answer a few questions. So we're gonna do a five-minute Q&A, and then we're gonna get right to the code, and it's in JavaScript. I know, it's in JavaScript, and that's okay, because JavaScript is my, third favorite language. It's like Python, Go, and then JavaScript. And JavaScript's actually pure, and it's in pure JavaScript. So we're not using any kind of jQuery or any of that, like, you know, libraries. We're using some pure JavaScript, okay? So that's what we're going to do. So let's start off with a five-minute Q&A, and then we are going to uh, get started. Okay, ready, set, go. And I'm going to show you guys a demo at the beginning and the end. Go. Five-minute Q&A. Why JavaScript? Uh, because I want to show this to you in the browser, and I don't know. I'm just I'm just kind of experimenting with JavaScript. You know, like I'm I'm changing as a as a as a programmer as an artist. I, I don't want to just like keep doing the same thing. And and you know what? It's it's really about the 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 greater idea. And I think it's gonna it's you know however many inputs I can show you like how a neural networks the better. Okay. What do you think about Mark Zuckerberg's AI? I think you know I have a lot of respect for Zuckerberg that he did that and he wrote an, and he wrote something about it. Zuckerberg is a CEO of a multi billion dollar company and he still programs. That is something to admire. Uh, Minimax algo. Actually, no, it's not going to be using the Minimax algo. PHP is the shittiest language. You're absolutely right. Can we build a neural net to curb the overwhelming feeling of existential dread? Yes. Um, we uh, a neural net that can read our emotional state. That can we we need some kind of like uh, brain computer interface, but it could read our emotional state and it could tell us what to do best. So kind of like a personal psychologist. When are you going to do the AI neural network for Daniel Shipman's asteroid code? Uh, that's going to be either next week or the week after that, but I'm aiming for next week. Do you have a separate bed for your hair when you go to sleep? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Siraj, please do a video on autoencoders for data compression. I do have a video on that. It's called uh, Build an Autoencoder in Five Minutes, but I'll do another one soon. How advanced is this JS going to be? Don't have much experience in JS. Uh, how advanced is it going to be? In terms of JavaScript, like raw JavaScript, it's not that advanced. In terms of computer science theory, it's a little advanced because we're using something called bitwise operations, which I'll explain in the in the video. Okay, so which which one is better, SVM or neural network? Uh, it depends on what you're trying to do, uh, but generally neural nets perform better uh, across a wide variety of tasks. Uh, neural net from, but if you have a, like just very 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 little data and you're trying to do something simple like linear regression, probably an SVM. A neural net from scratch in JS? Exactly. What is your New Year's resolution? I want, uh, next year, I want to get, let's see, probably 500,000 subscribers. And I want to create a movie um, with starring myself, and I direct it. And I want to uh, interview Elon. And uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Talk about ambition, right? Siraj, please do a video on wind load power forecast. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, something on weather. Something on weather. I've, I've actually been planning that. What are you going to make today? I'm going to explain that in a second. Uh, we have two more minutes in this Q&A. 
Why is PHP so bad? Because it doesn't have a lot of maintenance. It's pr programming language is only as good as the people who maintain the language. Not many people who are good maintain PHP anymore because all of those resources are moving to Python and Go and JavaScript. Why not make an AI that directs a movie? Someone actually did that. Check out AI movie script. Uh, Google that. What to do after Andrew Ung's course? Build. Watch my videos. Okay. By the way, I'm trying to interview Andrew Ong, and I tweeted him directly. So guys, check out the Twitter, check out my Twitter, and then look at my tweets, like tweets and replies, and see the one that I asked Andrew Ong to interview for my channel. Like it, retweet it, okay? The more people who like and retweet it, the more likely he is to say yes. I wanna interview that guy, okay? What is your secret sauce? My secret sauce is I genuinely, truly, from the bottom of my heart, I love what I do. I love AI, I love neural networks, I love being a YouTuber. And it took me a lot of tries to, to fail, fail to get to where I am. So my secret is that no matter how many times I failed, I, I, I picked myself up, I talked to my friends, and I, and, I, and I just kept going, okay? So one more question and then we're gonna get going. Uh, I wanna do a question I've never answered before. Uh, why Sirajology to Siraj Ravel? Great question. I changed the name of my YouTube channel and my just whole public persona to my full name because as I grow, I, I, I'm becoming a public figure and I want to be known as my full name, Siraj Ravel. It's not Sirajology. The game is over. It, shit's getting real now, okay? So I am Siraj Ravel, okay? So just remember that. Okay, so here we go. That's it for the five minute Q&A. Let's get started with the code. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a neural network uh, to beat the game of tic-tac-toe. I'm gonna go ahead and start screen sharing and then we are going to get started, okay? Uh, all right, so here we go. Let's get started. Screen share. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to demo this for you guys. This is actually in the browser, okay? It's actually in the browser. Um, but this is what it looks like. Let me just Let me just move this to the side. And let's see what you guys are saying here. Uh, okay, so this is what it looks like, guys. So what it's, what it's doing is it, is it is running a genetic algorithm, okay? And it's gonna look like this. These are, these are the four board games. It's got four board games running simultaneously. This is on the web. This is a web demo of the code that I'm going to do. And what it's doing is it's trying out a bunch of, uh, it's four AI simultaneously trying out a bunch of moods and it's recording what's happening in the source code, okay? It's recording what's happening in the source code, okay? And, and we can take the source code. The source is the weights file, okay? The, the weights are the connection between the synapses in the neural network. We can take these weights and we can put them in our neural net and it's gonna get better over time, okay? So I'm gonna explain this step by step. This is what it's gonna look like, okay? It's gonna look like this. It's a game of tic-tac-toe. We're gonna build tic-tac-toe from scratch and then we're gonna build our neural network from scratch, okay? And there's quite a bit of code here, so I'm just gonna get started. Let me X out of this, and we're gonna get to the text editor, okay? All right. Uh, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this uh, on the side so I can see what you guys are saying, just like that. Palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy, there's vomit on his sweater already. Mom's spaghetti, okay, so let me make sure I'm in the screen this time. Okay, there, I'm in the screen, okay? So let's get started, okay? I'm gonna code two class files. Why do you talk so fast? Makes me nervous. Okay, Rhinus, I, I will, I will, you're right, okay. Everything's cool, everything's cool, okay? So um, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to build our neural network. Okay, uh, uh, sorry, we're gonna build the game. We're gonna build tic-tac-toe, okay? It's gonna be ttt.js. Okay, here we go. Um, so let's get started. The first thing, okay, so what is this? Let me, let me, uh, let me explain what we're gonna do here. We're gonna, step one is we're gonna generate um, a randomly sized, let me, let me make it bigger. Up, 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 up. Size population. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys seeing these comments? Can you build Harambe? <laughs> Can you build Harambe? Oh man, I love you guys, man. You guys are just the best. Okay, so we're gonna generate a randomly sized population. It's gonna be player versus computer, okay? It's gonna be player versus computer, okay? So we're gonna generate a randomly sized population of neural nets, of neural nets. Or the best one. 
and then we're going to uh, and then we're going to uh, we're gonna uh, uh, the top scoring ones are favored to pit to populate the next generation. Uh, best ones get to reproduce. Okay, so that's how that's the basic logic of this game. Okay, uh, it's, it's it's we're gonna use pure JavaScript. It's gonna use web workers. Web workers are, and I haven't actually talked much about parallelism, uh, but <laughs> but web workers are basically uh, concurrency. They're threads in JavaScript. We want we want these things to be happening in parallel. Remember the demo I showed you guys at the beginning? There were four games happening at the same time. Those are web workers. They are happening concurrently. That means at the same time. Okay. Uh, we are using tabs, not spaces. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Increase the font size. I can do that. Bop, 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 bop. How's that? How about that? How's that? How's that for big as F? Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna define our neural net, uh, and we're it's gonna be called TTT for tic tac toe. Sorry, we're gonna define our game, which is called tic tac toe or TTT. Okay. We're gonna start off with a function, and the function um, uh, is going to be TTT. All right. So that's the function. And let's get started here. And we're going to say, you know, this is going to get a opening and then that. And then, OK. So all right, let's get started. Bigger than that. My Twitter handle is Siraj Rabal, S-I-R-A-J-R-A-B-A-L. Let me make that even bigger for you guys. OK, so this is as big as we are going. OK, so let's start off by defining um, our, our three states. So uh, we're going to say bar x, bar um, O, which is the, which is the, sorry, this, that's the, bar O is, you know, X is an O's, okay? And then bar tie. And the, and we're going to be X and the computer is going to be O, okay? And tie. Okay? So now, this is going to take about 45 minutes. If I can, if I can, yeah, that's right. You guys don't need to see the chats. That's true, that's true. All right, I'm just gonna. So I'm not. I can't see what you guys are saying right now. I'm just gonna like start coding because that really makes it easier for me. So um, and but I'll, I'll I'll pop it up once in once in a while. Okay. So let me move this. Du, 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 du. All right. So let me make this a little bigger. Okay. So let's get started. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is think about the squares. The squares, like we're gonna iterate through through them, and it's gonna look like this. The the iteration is gonna look like this. It's gonna be like it's gonna be like zero one two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there are eight. The, a, a game state is. Remember, a tic tac toe is there are two vertical lines, and then there's uh, two horizontal lines. Okay, so it's it's going to look at this, and when we iterate them, we're going to iterate at the top left, and we're going to move to the bottom right. Okay, top left to bottom right, and it's going to look like that. So I just wanted to show you that for a second. Okay, so now let's go ahead and initialize our board. So we're going to say function new board, and we're we're going to start off by uh, initializing our helper classes. Helper classes. Okay. These are our helper classes. That's what we all we want to initialize our helper classes. So, um, what is a what is a new board? Well, it's going to get nothing, right? We're just initializing it, so we're going to return zero. A new board gets absolutely no value. We're going to we're going to add value to that new board. What's another helper function we need? We want to check if the board is empty, right? So let's check. Let's create a function called is empty, and is empty checks uh, what is the parameter? The board itself, right? What are we checking? We're checking if the board is empty, right? So let's check if the board is empty. And we can return, it's gonna be a true or false value. So we'll do a, in JavaScript, there are three uh, equal signs to for, for this. So say return board zero, okay? So if it's zero, then return that value. It's gonna be a true or false. It's going to be a Boolean value, okay? So that's that's that helper function. What, what else do we need here? Let's say we're going to get the piece, okay? What is the piece? The piece is what, this is to retrieve uh, what's, what square in the tic-tac-toe, right? Which square are we using here? Okay, um, let's say board, we're gonna say square, okay? Those are our two parameters. We got the board and the square, which one? So we wanna get the value of that piece. And what are we doing here? Well, guess what? Guys, we are defining each of these uh, squares in our tic-tac-toe not as integers, but as bits, okay? And why are we thinking of them as bits? Each of these are two numbers. They're, they're, 
they're, they're bits that are two numbers long, like 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, like that. And why are we doing that? Well, it is faster to perform. Uh, uh, it's, it's just faster. If we're, if we're operating at the bit level rather than an abstraction, which are integers, if we're operating at the bit level, all of our operations are faster. Okay, And that's one of the great things about JavaScript is we can do that. Uh, so we're going to operate at the bit level. And what, what does that mean? That means that we're going to perform what are called bitwise operations. Bitwise operations. So let me let me let me write this, and then I'll explain what I mean by that. Okay. So board. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna pull up the chat in a second because I want to see if you guys know what I mean when I when I do this because this is uh, gonna be interesting. So up 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 and three. Okay. So what does this mean? What does this mean? This is this is a bitwise operation. So this essentially like so what this is saying is so for this uh so for this like what whatever's in the parentheses here for the square. This basically means uh take the square and multiply it by 2 to the one the first, which is the one value. And that's the value we get for that. That's th that's essentially a bitwise operator. Um and then what does it mean for the board? Well, for the board, that that the whole thing means we want to take the board and we want to divide it by uh, whatever the value up here is, OK, whatever this value is. So it's going to be this. And then for the, for the and sign, we are going to do uh, bitwise and multiplies those, uh, those two values uh, by 3, just because there are three squares uh, both horizontally and vertically. So what this is going to do is it's going to give us the bit value of whatever of wherever we are uh, in the game. That's it's going to give us that raw bit value because that's what this whole game is operating on. It's it's operating on bit values, okay? Because it's just faster to run our neural net that way, okay? So that's what that's going to look like. And I'm going to pull up the chat for a second. I want to see if you guys are. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Let me pull up the chat. Where is we? Where are you guys? OK. All right. OK, you guys are on point. You know, I'm just going to keep this chat window because I, I want to see you guys, because I, I, you know, just in case. OK. All right, thanks, guys. OK, yes, we understand this. OK, cool, 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 cool. OK. All right, so, so that's, that's, we're getting the piece. Uh, it is an OpenAI t-shirt, yes. Not that I work there, but I love the t-shirt. OK, so so now we've got the piece, uh, and now we're going to perform a move operation. So now we're going to say move. Um, uh, so for the move operation, what we want to do is, um, no, actually, I'll close that out. OK, so now for the move operation, we're going to say we got our board, we have our square, and now we have our piece. And we want to move that value to another position in the board, OK? So uh, what does move look like? Well, we want to say we're going to, again, we're going to perform a bitwise operation. And I'm going to explain how that works. So we're going to say board or, uh, let's see, piece less than, or not, not bitwise less. Uh, it's a shift operator. It's not a less than. It's a shift operation. So square uh, da, 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 one, OK? Just like that. And so we've got one, two, Three. Okay. So what is this doing? It's going to take. It's combining those values. So that's what the OR operation is doing. It's combining those values. So let me write a quick example of what I mean by that. So if we had zero one zero one, and then we had um, O, uh, if we had O one 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 one, to combine what this is doing is it's combining those values to show the move. So this would become one uh, one one one, right? So it's taking it's it, it's that OR operation. So so. Just like that, okay. So that's the move value, okay. So that's what it's doing for move. Now, um, so those are our helper methods, and let's go ahead and start writing our game uh, functionality. So we're gonna say game functionality. Uh, so we have our board, we have the turn, whoever's turn it is, and we have the history of the of the game state, okay. And this is stored using this is stored locally, and we're using JavaScript's local storage. Uh, functionality to do this. It's storing it locally in a cache, in a temporary cache. Okay? And that's the history of game states. And it's going to be and and, and it's going to be a stack. 
a stacked data structure so we can easily pop the top off and replace it. And we can push something new on it every time. That's why we're using a stack for that, OK? So let's go ahead and uh, initialize our values here. Uh, this is one of the annoying things about JavaScript. Uh, we just we we want to we want to initialize these uh, these values, okay? So this dot turn. Hold on. This dot turn equals turn, and this dot history equals history. Kind of annoying, but we have to do that, and it initializes those values. So now what we're going to do is we're going to define a prototype. So every JavaScript object has a prototype. A prototype is also an object. Uh, and all JavaScript objects inherit properties uh, uh, from their pro and their methods from their prototype. OK, so this is kind of like the, the, the god of the object, so the, the prototype. So we're going to call the prototype of the game object. And we're going to define a, a bunch of uh, functions for this. OK, so the first one we want to do is define the equals function. Well, what's the equals function doing? The equals function says, let's take that. Um, game equals uh, function that we already have. Uh, and we want to see if two places in the game state are equal to each other, OK? So we're going to say, hold on. Come on. Da, 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 da. And make sure that that's all on point. OK. And OK, so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to say return the value um, of whether or not it's equal. So we're going to say, we're going to check if the board if the board equals uh, whatever the other board is, and what is the other board? The other board is going to be the next state. Okay, we want to check if they're equal to each other. Okay, um, and uh, the turn is the same as this. Other dot turn. Okay, um, and this is going to be so. That's the equals value. So we're checking if it's equal or not. Uh, and I want to see where you guys are at. <sighs> OK. Um, let's see. OK, cool. OK, so, so, that's, so that's that. You guys are keeping up, more or less. And now we are going to uh, define the get piece method or for, for the prototype. Uh, prototype dot get piece. And the get piece method is going to get the value of that piece from our prototype, right? Uh, and the value is, remember, it's a bitwise, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a bit. Um, so we, we have um, a local function for this. And we're, it's, we're going to initialize the, the prototype using that local function. The square is the actual the the game state or sorry the board and we're going to return we're going to return uh the piece which is going to be when we give it two parameters the board and the square right the board and the square because we've already defined that get piece method up there remember up here we defined it so we can just return that for the prototype okay um uh let's see what else do we need we need to uh oh a move function right so prototype uh, and, oh, this is going to be fun to explain. So prototype dot move, um, and then we're going to say, well, what's the game move? What is the game move? Given the square that we are at, given the square that we are at, what does this look like? Okay, here's the fun part. Here's the fun part. So we're going to say, given our history and our local cache, which is a which is a stack. Remember, I said it's a stack. We're going to push the new value. Uh, of this, the new state of the board onto our stack. Remember, it's a it's a stack of of game states, and then we're gonna say uh, let's get this, uh, let's take the board that we already have and perform a move because we've just moved it right. Uh, given the board, the square, and the turn, okay, the turn of where we are. Lastly, we want to define the turn. And it's going to be this uh, XOR operator. This is going to do a, a bitwise XOR operation. And it's going to assign the result to the first operator, operand. So what does that mean? It's going to basically, it's shifting the bit. So it's either you or me, you or me, you or me, right? So that just, it just shifts one, one way or the other. OK, so whose move is it, yours or the AI's? <clears throat> OK, so now 
uh, we're going to uh, uh, we also want an undo function, right? Game dot prototype dot undo. Okay, so function game undo. So what does this mean? So if we want to undo one of our moves, this is what we have to do. We've got to take the board we already had, and this is why it's great to have a stack for this, right? The stack data structure is um, great for this because we can easily, we can, uh, it's, it's a constant time retrieval of whatever we just pushed, pushed on it. It's a constant time retrieval, okay? So we're going to say this.history.pop. We're going to pop it off the stack. What was that last game state? Well, we want that game state, and we're going we're gonna to get it. And then, We're going to uh, remember. We're going to switch that turn back using that XOR operator. It's it's back to you or it's back to me. Whoever was the opposite. Okay. And so now we want to declare our winner. So how do we declare our winner? Well, it we're going to do a, a, once again game dot prototype dot winner equals function, and then we have a function internally for who is the winner of the game, given the board. Right. Given the board, we can define who the winner is going to be. And um, the winner is going, it's going to return uh, the, the value of who it's going to be given the, the board, this dot board. OK, so now um, there's one more thing I want to do in this class. There's one more thing I want to do. We're going to, we're going to draw the board, OK? We're going to draw the board. And before I draw the board, I'm going to write this out, and I'm going to explain what this is. OK, CTX. CTX is our canvas. This is how we're drawing in JavaScript. Don't be confused that thing and think this is the context. It's, 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 the, it's the canvas, which we could think of as an object that we're passing around and how we draw on the screen. It's a canvas object. Uh, and uh, we're, we're going to step by step draw out this board, OK? Uh, and it's going to be a series of values here. So we're going to start off by we're going to initialize our canvas by saying begin path. OK, and then we're going to say uh, we want to do a move to function. And we're going to actually do this several times. So I'm going to copy and paste this. One, two, three. OK, just like that. And let me, let me talk about what I'm doing here. But first, uh, I have my move to, and then I have my line to, line to. OK, I am iteratively, right here, I am iteratively drawing out this uh, state. Can anyone, OK, so now I'm going to engage you guys for a second before I draw this. I haven't done this before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to engage you guys. Can anyone tell me in their own words uh, uh, when, when to use a canvas? When to use a canvas in JavaScript? Like, wh what is an example beside this? OK. When, when, is a good, when, is, when, when would we use a canvas? Like, besides a game, what's like another application? I, I just want to make sure I've, I've got you guys uh, no idea. OK, so another, so another um, example would be drawing GUIs. Exactly, OK? Any, any kind of GUI, image, proce image processing, great example, making animations. OK, cool. So, so great, to draw stuff. OK, so you guys are maps. All right, a lot of great, great suggestions. OK, so exactly. So we're going to draw this canvas. So this is the, this is the kind of like a, this is the kind of a little boring part, but you know, I'm just going to write out these values, and then I'm going to explain what I'm doing, uh, which is always the, you know, that part about games where it's like, you know, you got to manually, you know, write up the the values for the the coordinates, and and um, yes, it's six six six. I know. Yes, it's hilarious, isn't it? Okay, so ba -ba -ba -ba, line move to. 0 0.95, 0 0.33. And you'll notice that I'm uh, using similar values here. Move to um, 0 0.66. So, OK, so da, 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 move. And then I want to end it with a stroke. And that's going to be, OK, hold on. OK, so what's happening here? OK, so I'm drawing out each of those lines. OK, so I'm moving to a point, and then I'm drawing a line. And I'm saying, what is the, what is the x, y coordinate that I want to draw that? Uh, or or have that point, and what is the end point? So basically, it's it's saying, okay, draw one line uh, down vertically, draw the next line down vertically, draw the other two lines horizontally, and then it does all that in one stroke, and it's it's called by the stroke function. Okay, 
So that is what I'm going to do for the uh, tic-tac-toe code. And now I'm gonna get straight into the neural network, okay? So let's go ahead and get started with the neural network. Um, uh, the neural net code is going to use this, this code um, to uh, get better over time. So now we're gonna write our neural net, okay? So I'm gonna use a neural network, okay, code. I'm gonna write that out. And let me make sure, you know, you guys are, you guys are on point. You guys are all good. Everybody's, everybody's Gucci. Woohoo! All right. Woo, 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 woo. Okay, uh, we got people from all over the place, and we're going to do a neural network now, okay? Um, cool. So let's get started. So first, we're going to define our neural net variable, okay? And how does that work? Well, we, we're going to use this. Let me just. So we're going to define our neural net, okay? Uh, and. We're gonna write all of our functions inside of this neural net. Um, and oh, we also want to make sure that we are, I forgot about this. This is one of those JavaScript things about the browser, use strict. So what is use strict? Use strict allows you to place a program or a function in a strict operating context. What does that mean? Uh, basically, it prevents certain actions from being taken and, and throwing more exceptions. So it's kind of like a safety check. So you know, when you're in the browser, you're gonna have a certain things happen that you don't want, like uh, let's say I don't know some some kind of crash or like uh, just an unexpected uh, operation. Especially since we're using concurrency, there can be problems like deadlocks. There can be problems like uh, you know, just like uh, and uh, just a lot of things can go wrong. And strict helps prevent that. Okay, so 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 that's why we're using strict and. Uh, Let's go ahead and get started here. So we're going to write our, our first function here for our neural network, which is the get sizes function. What does this do? So OK, let me, let me talk about this for a second. And I'm going to have the chat open for this while I, while I explain a little bit about this. So, um, uh, so, so what we're doing here is we are building the neural net, right? This is a feed forward neural net. This is a feed forward neural net. And a feed forward neural net, it's a three layer feed forward neural net with 128 hidden nodes. There are 128 hidden nodes, OK? Um, and the, and, and why, why are we doing this? Uh, the brain has, oh, let's think about the brain, by the way. Uh, this is going to be a two minute tangent where I talk about the brain, and then I'm going to get back into the code, OK? So the brain has like 100, it has 100 billion neurons, which communicate uh, through electrochemical signals. And these neurons are connected through junctions known as synapses. And each neuron receives thousands and thousands of connections with other neurons, constantly signals to reach the cell body, OK? And the resulting sum of the signal, if the resulting sum of the signals surpasses a certain threshold, then a response is sent throughout the axon. So we have to reach uh, a certain threshold for, that val for the value to, um, to propagate forward through our, through our neural network, OK? That's what we want to do. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the threshold in a second. OK, so let's go ahead and start with our get sizes function. So for get sizes, and by the way, guys, check out, write this down. OK, write this down. MCB180X. I'll say it again. MCB180X. It's a free course online by Harvard University, which I took. I absolutely love. It's gonna, it, it talks about the brain. It's an introduction to neuroscience. And it provides a great gateway into neural networks. You see things like uh, feed forward, recurrent. These terms that we talk about uh, in, in, in uh, machine learning, they are actually there in the brain. And this is a great course to learn about the brain and kind of get biologically inspired by the beauty of our brain's internal neural networks. Remember, MCB180X, great course. OK, so let's get back to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to return uh, a collection of nodes. Nodes are, uh, we have nodes in each layer of our network, right? A three layer feed forward neural network. Each layer has a, an amount of nodes. So what we what we want to do when this get sizes function is we want to get the size of each layer. And what is the size of each layer? It's going to be the number of nodes or neurons in each layer. So we're going to say return nodes.map function, uh, return nodes.map. And we're going to say um, uh, for that layer, Let's uh, return that layer's length, all right? So we have the length is going to be the number of nodes in that layer. 
So that's going to get give us the length. This is a helper function. So the next one is, well, we, we, we know how to get the sizes, but let's make the actual node or neuron itself. So let's write a function for that. So we'll say make node, given the layer's index, given uh, the index itself, the sizes, and the nodes. OK. Um, let's, so let's initialize this. Hold on. Damn it. OK. <laughs> Uh, let's initialize it. All right, so each node, let's let's start off by initializing uh, our node. Our node is going to have an input of zero. That's going to be the initial input. They have nothing. Remember, we're, we have, there's nothing in there. Uh, it's going to start off as zero. Okay, and now we want to define our threshold. Define threshold. Okay, and remember, I talked about that threshold, right? The threshold is the 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 top. It is the the threshold is the limit, right? And if and if the amount of the sum of all the activation functions on the data from one net to the other, if it reaches that threshold, then it can propagate. But it has to reach that threshold for it to propagate, just like in the brain. Okay, so let's define the threshold, and we're going to say if the layer's index is less than the length of the sizes uh, of, of the layers, then we're going to say, get that threshold, and we want to initialize it as um, whatever comes out of this function. OK, what is the function? We're going to say the type of nodes, if it's undefined, so as, if, as in there's nothing there, or uh, that value is 1, then uh, the nodes it uh, gets the layer index and the index the other index. Let me let me talk about this. What, what's what's happening here? Let's see. So each node is connected to every other node in the next layer. So it's a two D matrix. It's a two D matrix of values. All right. Each node is connected to every other node. Remember those weights, those connections, those synapses, and it's a two D matrix. And we're going to define the threshold just like that. OK, so now, speaking of weights, let's define our node's weights. We have, so let's define those weights. So those weights uh, are part of the node. And we're going to say type of uh, nodes if it's undefined, again. So if there's, if there's nothing there, or, or if, there's, uh, if, there's, if there's nothing there, or uh, hold on. New array sizes layer index plus one. Let me, let me just write this out, and then I'm going to define what I'm talking about here. Uh, layer index. And then I'm going to pull up the chat for a second to you know, see where you guys are at. Um, function w. And return w. Okay. Okay. So let me talk about what's happening here. Okay. So. Okay. So we have our weights of our nodes, and if it is empty, or there is, if we've, uh, if if the if the node is empty, or uh, there's an there's an array with 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 some value in it, then we want to. Uh, return the number of weights in that in in that node, and we're going to update the, the the connections in that node uh, via this weights dot map function. Okay, and we're, we're and we're going to return the value. So let me define the weights. That's what this is doing. It's defining the weights. Okay. Now let me see if anybody has any questions here. Let's see. What do we got here? What do we got here? Um. Da, 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 da. Nothing in the chat. All right. Cool, cool, cool. OK. All right, cool, cool. OK, so those are our functions. And when we do, uh, and now we can return that node. OK, that's the end of that uh, function. And we can return our node. OK. Um, boom. 
So now let's define, so that's the node. Now let's define the network itself, the actual network. Right? It's a neural network, so let's define that network. And for the input, we could give it, we could either create our, we can either initialize our network via a sizes value or a node value, as in uh, the size of a layer is equal to the number of nodes. So we're just going to say sizes or nodes. OK, we can initialize it either way. Um, and we'll define, we'll define variables for both of these things, so for the sizes and for the nodes. So we want to say if uh, the array is an array of sizes or nodes, that value we had for the parameter, and the array is an array and if it so let me be more specific about what I'm doing here. So um, sizes or nodes, hold on. And if there's something in there, then okay, so first of all, so what is it saying? This is saying if, if first of all, if there is, if the if the parameter is not empty, then we want to take those values and we're gonna initialize them. Uh, the 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 local variables that we initialize. We're going to use that get sizes function that we defined, and we're going to use the sizes or nodes uh, parameter. And then we're going to initialize our nodes. OK, there are two values that we're thinking about here, sizes or nodes. Um, else, uh, sizes equals sizes or nodes. OK, um, that's our else value. And now, we want to define how many nodes we have. OK, so now we're going to define how many nodes we have. So bah, bah, bah. So how many nodes do we have? The map function is going to help us get that, that value. Uh, and it's going to be a callback. It's going to be via a function callback, uh, where we have a size and the um, an iterator as the parameter, OK, which, is, which we're going we're gonna to use to, to iterate through this uh, um, which is we're going to use it to iterate through the array, count the number of values, and then that's going to be uh, the, the the number of nodes that we have. Okay, so we're going to say var each layer is going to be an array uh, initialized by a size. Okay, and so and so the layer is initialized as an array of sizes. So let's do our iteration to count the number of nodes. We're going we're gonna to count the number of nodes. So say var j starts off as 0. And uh, j, and remember, j is just arbitrary. It's less than the size, because we're iterating through the size. And we're going to say uh, plus plus j. OK? So we're going to iterate through each. Uh, and so and then I'm going to pull up the chat, and we'll answer a few questions, or if any if there are. And what is that? So what is what is each layer? Uh, we're going to we're, we're we're giving those layers values here. And we're saying make a node uh, given the the length, given where we are, given the sizes, and given the number of nodes. Okay? And that's how we're gonna define each of our layers. And when we're done with that, when we've when we've uh, initialized each of our layers, we're doing two things here. We're we're defining our nodes and we're initializing our layers at the same time. OK? That's so, and then we'll return that value when it's done. OK? And uh, so there's that. Um, OK, so we've got that there. Where do I get the t-shirt? Uh, guys, just wait a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to launch a, a, a clothing line soon, OK? Right, no self-promotion, guys. <laughs> uh, OK, so, so that's that. Um, OK, one more function in this class. One more function in this class. So we want to, uh, we want to set the weight values. OK, we're going to set the weight values. So we're going to say the prototype of our neural network is going to set our weight values um, right, So. We could also, if we wanted to, we could write a get function so we could get our weights, but we're just going to write a set weights function. OK? Um, function is going to be the net dot set weights. Um, given the, 
So we're going to give it weights as a parameter. What are those weights going to be? Well, they're going to be a 2D matrix. Each layer for each node, each node, so in, inside of each layer in our neural network, there are a collection of nodes. And each node has a 2D matrix of weights that connect it to every other node in the next layer. And we want to set the values for those weights. And how are we updating this? Well, it's not through backpropagation. It's through genetic algorithm, right? So instead of just saying we're going to update the weights constantly um, via backpropagation uh, uh, and gradient descent, we're going to update the weights by putting them by, by having several neural nets and just having them play like I showed you in the web app, and then taking those weights, uh, and taking the weights of the best ones and, and, and updating the only the best neural nets, and then having those, and then, and then creating more from those, OK? So, so OK, so, so for, for each node, we're going to. Say well, where are we? Where are we in terms of our layer, and where are we in terms of uh, the weights? So there are two indexes here: the index of where we are in the layer, and then the index of where we are in the in the weights or, uh, matrix. Okay, so um, we're going to take the weights of our node. And by the way, this code is going on GitHub, guys. I'm going to I'm going to within an hour of me finishing this, I'm going to put post the code on GitHub. The complete code, including the HTML and the CSS, which is actually quite long, uh, which I'm not going to do in this. I'm just doing the logic. I'm just doing the hard logic for this, the, the logic that matters. OK? So, um, so our weights are going to be um, we're going to take the, the index that we were, we were given, and then we're going to take the index, right, both of those were given. We're going to map it to um, via this callback function. And then we're going to return the value of w, which is going to be our uh, weight 2D matrix. OK? Uh, now, at the end of this, we're going to uh, say that our neural net equals the neural net that we've just initialized. OK? And, um, and then we could return that. Okay, so now let me see the chat, and okay, okay. So now, so 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 let me let me show you guys the demo. Okay, so that's so um so let's let's go over what I've what I've done so far. Um, so what I've done is I've initialized my board. Uh, I've initialized the I've created a set of helper methods to get the pieces to check if it's empty. Uh. To move it to get the pieces, then I've initialized the game state, and I've used the prototype uh, function of JavaScript of that game object to define a bunch of very important moves, like checking if two pieces are equal, to check if two squares are equal, to get the piece to to move, um, to see who the winner is, and then to draw the board using Canvas. I've created a neural net function or a neural net class uh, that's that initializes a node. What does a node look like? Well, a node is a an object that has connections to every other node in every layer of our neural network. Um, there is a library called ConvNet.js created by Andre Karpathy, uh, which I've met. He's a cool guy. Um, but um, yeah, but that's not what we're doing right now. I, I thought about doing that. I might. Do, I, I will do that in a future video. Um, and uh, we've we've initialized our node. We've initialized our network. We've set the weight values for each of those. Okay, and so that's how. So that's how um, that is working, and and I will fully comment the code and post this on GitHub. It's not a recurrent net. It is a feed forward neural net. So let me let me just show you guys this code. Okay, so hold on. What does this look like? Um, so that's what that looks like. And I'm getting a call right now. Do not call me while I'm live. You know what I'm saying? OK, so, so that's what that, what that has done. And what I want to do is I want to show you guys uh, what that looks like. Um, so we're going to go to the, um, that value. 
I could run this off a local server. Um, CT. Um, but I don't want to do that right now. I want to um, hold on. Da, 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 da. Where, where was this? I'm going to open up Chrome for a second. What was it? CT. What was it? What was it? IOTT. It was something. But essentially, um, that was what it was. And, um, oh, guys, shit. All right. Okay, so, um, So that's what that was, and I was showing you guys my history here. Okay, so that is our uh, MacBook is promoting itself, right? Okay, so so that was the code, and uh, what I want to do is I want to, if I can get the link to this, show you guys. You know what? I'm going to post the link in the description, and uh, then I'm going to. The, the link to the web app is going to be there. But but what happened was I I had that. I had the demo, but I just can't find the uh, link to it right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the uh, screen share here and stop screen sharing. And I'm going to be, do me. OK, so uh, an ending five minute Q&A, and then we can get started. OK? Let's see, am I I'm still up there? Yes, yeah, I'm still there. Okay. So yeah, okay, cool. So uh, five minute QA. Can you make the same tic tac toe with Java? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I I uh, don't have a link to that, uh, but if you just search tic tac toe on GitHub and then just Java, I promise you you will find results. Okay, yes, there we go. Thank you, Chatya. He showed uh, where it's where it's at. Where it's at, exactly. You know what? I'm gonna show you guys the, the demo of this. Okay, let me let me show you guys a demo. You guys deserve a demo. So 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 I'm gonna screen share. Oh, I'm so excited. Let me let me start the screen share. Okay, guys, check this out. Okay, so what is what's happening? This is what it's gonna look like. We take our we take our weights. We take our weights. Okay, it's, which is it's going to learn via genetic programming, and then we can we can we can test it. So what does that look like? Hold on. Okay, so we're gonna say AI neural net. And we're gonna paste those weights in the weights that it learned from genetic pro, uh, from 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 this genetic environment, and we'll paste those weights in. This, remember, these weights are a matrix of values of what it's learned through playing. Okay, and I'll play something, it's gonna think, and then it's gonna play, and then I'll play something, and it's gonna think, and then it's gonna play. Look at this smart thing. It's trying to go in that bottom left corner. I am not gonna let you because you are not smart enough to beat a human yet. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna stop screen sharing again. And back to my now three minute Q and A. But uh, whoever sent me the link to that, thank you so much. Okay, so three more minutes. Jupyter notebook. Uh, that I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna start using more Jupyter notebooks, um, for sure. Uh, in the future. Great. Uh, great thing. Uh, thanks, David, for the compliments. Uh, can you do more slow tutorials? Focus more on understanding the theory. Yes, absolutely, Max. I, I I'm getting better at this. Where did you go to schooling? I went to Columbia. I studied myself on the internet, all this stuff on my own. How is this better than simply writing a tic-tac-toe game using the Monte Carlo method? Um, so the Monte Carlo tree search is actually quite um, effective. And, uh, Al and AlphaGo, AlphaGo used Monte Carlo. How is it better? It's not better, actually. Um, it's just different. Did you add more gray to your hair? Spark, uh, I didn't. It's just it's just always like that now. But I'm gonna regray it in the future. Does training more with more does training more with more layers make the AI better? Uh, generally, the more layers you add, the better your neural network is. Uh, but the trick is to just to just have as many layers as you need because the more layers you add, the more computation there is, right? So like always, there's that trade-off. Siraj, I would like you. I would like to suggest to you a simple game I made and want to implement a bot into it. Us, Us, Usama, definitely post that in the comments. Which books are useful? 
Um, Andrew Ong has a new book out called Machine Learning Yearning. Uh, Ian Goodfellow uh, has a book out, who's one of the researchers at OpenAI, uh, called Deep Learning, which I would definitely re uh, read. Is the gray hair related to machine learning? The gray hair is just my style, you know what I mean? Which laptop are you using? A MacBook Pro 2015? No, it is a MacBook Pro 2016 with the Force Touch. Could you make a simple tutorial about deep learning, which learned you from zero to hero in that field? That is coming up next year. And by next year, I mean in January. It's going to be a from scratch series that I'm going to make. Um, hi, Siraj. From where can we get the data set for an AI girlfriend? Um, look for chat logs for um, uh, chat chat room chat logs for like a dating site. Are you slowly building a self-learning AI for retro games, maybe in the future? Uh, yes, I, I mean, I, 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 I am going to focus more on games in the future. Yes, absolutely. OK, do you recommend JS or Python for AI learning? Python, Python. Uh, but, but, but the ConvNet JS library by Andre is actually pretty good. Jake, glad to have you here at my live, uh, live cast. Harsh, thank you. Apoor, can we make more similar programs? Yes. Do a neural net for playing Tetris uh, eventually. Make a neural net for assembly. OK, so um, I, I'm going to tell a short story, and then we're done. Um, end video with the song. That's a great idea. I'll, you know what? I'm live, so I'm just going to freestyle. OK, so uh, by the way, I had this uh, my, my mentor at Meetup. When I worked at Meetup as an intern, he, uh, he was like, I remember like being really confused. I was it was I was an iOS programmer at Meetup for the summer, and I was like trying to figure out this problem. And, it, and if any of you guys have used Xcode before, you know that when something goes wrong and you have a breakpoint, it shows a bunch of assembly, which I've always kind of just like ignored. But he was like, I was like, I was I had, I was focusing on this problem for like four or five hours, and I just couldn't figure it out. And then he comes in, uh, my mentor Michael Gray, and he's just like, he looks at the assembly, and he's just like, within thirty seconds, he's like, that's your problem. Looking at the assembly, how gangster is that? So yeah, a neural network for assembly, maybe a bit, maybe in the future. So I'm gonna end this with a freestyle rap. Someone give, and I'll freestyle about machine learning. So someone give me a topic, I'll go. It's gonna be a one minute freestyle. Someone say a topic. Just someone say a topic. I'll just wait for a topic. Here we go, whatever is the first topic. Uh, assembly is badass, so let's just do assembly. Okay, I love assembly, I'm like, it's like my enemy because it's so hard that I cannot see what is happening. My mind is so free. When I look at it, it looks at me and it says, you can't beat me because I'm better than you. Don't you see? Okay, so that was my short 15 second freestyle. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, thanks guys for watching. For now, I've got to go focus on this video I'm making. So <laughs> thanks for watching. Love you guys. Code is going up very soon. Join the Slack channel, by the way. There's a Slack channel. Continue the conversation there. It's in the description of every one of my videos. That wasn't even a minute. I know. I, I'm getting better. OK, so thanks, guys. Love you. OK. How do I end this session? There we go.